name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. As we come together to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this third Sunday of Easter, on this beautiful Sunday morning, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to call sinners. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you heal the contrite. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, Lord have, mercy. have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me, with him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue has exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope 
because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised, Je God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses, exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially, according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your surgeoning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, 
who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast, and one of them named Clopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place in these days? And he replied to them, what sort of things? They said to him, the things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory. Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, the Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> well, good morning. It is a beautiful Sunday morning here on the third Sunday of Easter. And today we have the story of the two disciples on their way to Emmaus. And a lot of scripture scholars first believed that this was this Clopas 
<clears throat> and then also possibly Peter, but more scholars believe that this was probably Luke himself who was the other disciple walking along the way. And you remember that Jesus has appeared to Mary Magdalene and has told her to go tell his disciples, to his apostles, to meet him in Galilee. And so what do these two disciples do? They head in the opposite direction from where Galilee is. They head toward Emmaus. And they're dejected, they're downcast. They feel like all of their hope, their faith, everything has been destroyed. And they're walking along miserable. And suddenly, this guy shows up <clears throat> and begins to talk with them and begins to ask questions. And suddenly, he begins to tell them, or I should say, they begin to tell him that they had, were hoping that this Jesus, the Nazarene, who was, great, who was a great prophet and great indeed, would be the Redeemer of Israel, would be the great Messiah. But he was crucified. He died. That can't be. And Jesus then begins to explain to them that you can't pick the Messiah just on the good days, when he's curing the sick, when he's feeding the multitudes, when he's giving sight to the blind, the, uh, uh, speech to the mute, the, d the deaf hear, the lame leap for joy. Those are the Messiah days that we want to celebrate. Those are the ones that we want to embrace. Those are the ones that we want to journey with all of our life. But Jesus says, no, you got to take the whole picture. The Messiah was called to be a suffering servant. That you have to accept the crucifixion. You have to accept the rejection. You have to accept the isolation. You have to accept the death of the Messiah to truly understand his mission of mercy. And I think that's a good message for all of us to remember this day, particularly as we continue to go through this pandemic, uh, uh, this vi the viral pandemic, is that we all want this to be over. We all want the great things of life, going out to the, to the pool, hanging out in the park, going out on the river. If you're one of the lucky ones who live along the coast, to go out on the beach. We all want to celebrate the good things of life. Nobody wants to celebrate, i.e., the bad things of life. But sometimes life throws us a curve. Sometimes life just literally falls apart, whether it be because of a pandemic, an illness, a lost child, a wayward parent, whatever it might be, we have to, as Christians, realize that if we're going to carry our cross with Jesus, that we have to accept the, the pain and the suffering of that cross to get to the resurrection of Easter. And I guarantee you, it's all worth it. It's all going to be fine. It's all going to be even better than it was before. Because Jesus tells us, if we live the gospel message, if we love one another as he has commanded us to do, if we are servants to one another, if we persevere in times of trouble, if we enter into prayer and give people hope and let them know that our faith is alive, that our joy is, ri is rising up, then we too shall see a new day. And it will burst upon us like that Easter Sunday burst upon Mary, upon Peter, upon the apostles, even along the way to Emmaus. And what gives us the strength and the courage and the perseverance to do that is exactly what gave them the perseverance and the joy back into their lives. We come together each week and we recognize him in the breaking of the bread. We know in the depths of our heart by faith and by faith alone that when that bread is broken, it is not bread but it is the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ. And whether we receive it in person 
or whether we receive the grace that flows from it virtually as we have to today. If our hearts are open and our lives are ready, that grace will imbue us with a strength of purpose, a purpose of joy, a purpose of hope, a purpose of faith, a purpose of love, all wrapped up in serving one another, in loving one another, as he has loved us. Please stand. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now let us turn to our Heavenly Father and offer our petitions. For the church throughout the world, may Jesus, our head, grant us reconciliation and unity. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For war-torn nations, may there be peace in every place experiencing violence and war. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those saddened by loss or discouragement, may the promises of the risen Lord lift them from their despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in this community who struggle with their faith, may God's word open their hearts and nourish them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our brothers and sisters in Christ who have died, may they rejoice in the presence of our Heavenly Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the parish for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we continue to pray for all of those who are on the front lines of this pandemic, that God will protect them and give them the perseverance and the fortitude to fight the fight. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all those scientists and researchers out there who are searching for a cure. May God grant them the wisdom. For this, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all of those who have died because of this pandemic crisis. May God's mercy be upon them and may they see him in the breaking of the bread. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we, your children, come before you this Sunday morning to offer praise and glory to your name. Fill us with the grace of the Holy Spirit, that we may truly serve one another as you have commanded us to do. And we ask all of this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
to wash away my iniquity and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exalted church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. indeed holy O lord and all you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become for us the body and blood of your son our lord jesus christ at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of it, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Pius X, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. 
Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you've summoned before you. And in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind and witness to your kingdom. For there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. <coughs> <clears throat> Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Oh. And now at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not I am worthy not that worthy you should enter under my roof, my roof. but only, only say the word, word and my soul shall be healed. Oh, 
And let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, everybody, we want to thank you all for being here and joining us via the, uh, the internet. We want to thank uh, Beth, Mary Beth, for reading for us and for our cantor and musician. Thank you all. It's always nice to have you. And of course, our videographers. Uh, if by chance you see uh, Mary Beth's parents out this week, uh, be sure to wish Jerry and Beth uh, Daly a happy 60th anniversary. They celebrated 60 years of marriage this week, so we want to wish them well and ask God to continue to bless them and to send his love upon them. Take good care of each other, stay safe. We will get back together one of these days, and when we do, you are all invited, not only to a full church, but you're invited to one heck of a party across the street uh, on the playground when we get back together, all right? So if not before, we'll see you then. Take care, and we'll see you next week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is in it. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.